I am still learning new things about OneNote. Hi everybody, welcome to Talk and Chalk. I'm Beck. I'm an assistant principal in Southwest Sydney and today I'm going to be taking you through some of the features that I've discovered as I learn more and more about using OneNote. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I met lots of you when I was at Edutech and thank you to the people that came up and introduced themselves to me and thank you for not realizing that I know exactly who you are based on the names that usually comment and things like that. I appreciate learning all about you and I heard some amazing things about the things that you're either doing with your schools or your own kids and the feedback from the presentations that I gave has just been really really great and one of the presentations I did was with Microsoft on using OneNote. It was 20 minutes insanely speedy and I'm pretty sure I rushed through a lot of things but I hope it was helpful. I'm sure it is since I've had lots of contact from people asking just for some clarification on things and saying that they're really keen to use OneNote back at their school. So Please send me a message if you have any questions, drop it in the comments below, um, hit me up on Twitter, Facebook or Instagram, any of those mediums is absolutely fine. I always answer, maybe not straight away, but I always answer, I promise. So before we get into it though, just a couple of reminders, I will be presenting at a couple of professional learning sessions coming up soon. One in the holidays, the On Butterfly Wings conference. If you're not part of the On, on Butterfly Wings community, um, just search for it on Facebook on butterfly wings. English is the biggest group. And there's also the on butterfly wings conference group as well. I am one of the keynote speakers and I'll also be doing a workshop on CV writing and guided reading and in week 10 of this term. So in a, just over a week, I'm going to be one of the opening speakers at uh, Crestwood public schools teach me on writing. I'll be opening up on Tuesday and Eddie Wu is going to be opening up on Thursday. So I will link the information in the description below if you want to go over to one of those events. Um, obviously, I highly recommend seeing Eddie. And yes, it is a writing thing. He'll be talking about that, obviously, from a very different perspective, <laughs> necessarily from me being primary and also considering his background is mathematics, but he's very much about cross curricula. So I think it will be a good day. <laughs> uh, if you want any more information, again, just comment below and I'll give you some more info. So what I'm going to do today though, is I'm going to flip around. We're going to do some screen capturing. I'm going to take you into OneNote. Now I'm going to take you into the version that I like to use the most, which is the 2016 version. You might have the Windows 10 version or the online version as well. These things are compatible across the different uh, formats that you use. So it might look a little different, even though you still have the capability to do these things. So I'm going to go into 2016 just so it's easier to use. If you use something different though, and you can't find it too easily, ask away. I'll see if I can help you out. Okay. So I'm going to flip around now and let's look at some of the features that I've discovered in my time using OneNote, which kind of changes how I do things now. Okay. I've just opened this up into the teaching program that I use at my school. So this might look a bit confusing. So I'm just going to go into my one notebook, which is not one that I actually use because everything is saved in all the other ones that I use. So I'm going to go here. So if you haven't used OneNote before, hopefully this will not be too overwhelming for you. Um, so I'm going to start with just backgrounds. So I'm just going to click on this, this uh, cross at the top here, which will start a new tab, new section here. Uh, so I'm just going to call this backgrounds. Actually, you know what? Yes, I will do this. <laughs> Backgrounds. So you can see some different things that I'm doing in over here. So if we go up to uh, insert, not insert, view, sorry. Um, and the top here, there's a couple of tiles here. This one here says rule line. So you can see, I don't know if you can actually see that though. I'll click on one of them. See how you all of a sudden get ruled lines here. The only thing I find though is that typing away doesn't necessarily match the ruled lines. You've got to um, actually change the formatting of your your text and everything to be able to match the lines there. So, you know, that just takes a bit of playing around with it depending on the font and the format that you actually personally like to use uh, to put it on the lines or you may prefer to be a writer and you might want to write on these lines. Now let's see if I can get some wider ones though. So here's some wider lines. I'm just getting my pen out at the moment. And you know, you might want to do those on your lines there. 
So that's an option for, you know, your backgrounds. You can also change the color if you come to the tab next to it. And I'm going to give that like a yellow background. So I can take the ruled lines off. I might not want that. And I might just have the colorful background there. Something that I like to do is actually match the tab at the top to the color of the background. So I'm just going to right click on it. And here it says section color. And because that was like a yellowy color, I might pick yellow just to match it. Or I might pick some a tone that kind of just goes with it, like orange or something like that. And this is something that's kind of a, uh, handy for us in terms of teaching when we're looking at our KLA structures that are color coded, at least in the New South Wales system. So, you know, um, English is yellow and mathematics is orange. Um, creative arts is blue. So you might want to color code your program to match it just to make it, you know, a bit easier to use. Um, so the other option that you've got with these ruled lines, I'm just going to get rid of that color for a second, no color, is the grids. So if you're using um, OneNote to plan for something in you know, mathematics or engineering or anything like that, these ruled lines come in handy if you're using this to display onto a digital display in the classroom and you're doing something math with you know mathematics and your kids have grid books or if you're trying to draw or anything like that, those lines are there to help you too. Okay, moving on from there, I'm just going to create a new tab and I'm going to call it Photos. And so I'm just going to show you about screen clipping. So screen clipping, you need to go to Insert and then here is screen clipping. So all you do is uh, click on that and it's going to drop to the other window that you've got open and it's going to look a little fuzzy because what it wants you to do is crop the section that you want to focus on. So I don't want this whole picture of Jason Momoa as Aquaman. I just want his face. <laughs> so I'm going to highlight the section that I want there. And then once I've let go, it's going to put it in here for me and give me a notation. Screen clipping taken at this time, at this date. Now you can delete that notation if you don't want it. And then you can resize the image if you want to as well. So um, that's one way to do it. Another thing that you can do with photos, and I'll just make another little tab over the side here. Um, so if you are new to OneNote and you haven't noticed, over this side here, I'm creating um, new tabs underneath photos. So it's kind of like a little menu for you here. I'm just gonna get rid of that. So I go insert photo, insert pictures. I probably have saved a bunch of pictures on my camera. Oh, there we go. This is, uh, oh yeah. Oh, why did I do that? Click undo. There it is there. So I'm going to right click copy text from picture. I'm going to paste it over here and see if this works. This was from a Dylan William workshop. Oh, look at that. That came out pretty well, actually. Not bad, except the bottom down here is a bit, hmm, <laughs> not the best picture, but at least it's a time saver for the most of it to get there. So that's one other thing that you can do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one note. Okay, so let's look at um, copying and pasting. I'm going to, um, not copying and pasting, check boxes is what I'm talking about. So check boxes here. Now this is the time saver part. So let's say uh, outcomes and content. Now, if you've seen some of my other videos, I've given you guys templates for programming. But the hardest part is uh, when you go to the syllabus and you're looking at the actual content that you need. So I'm just going to go English syllabus. I'm going to go to stage three. Here we go, stage three content. And you know, you've got all those content markers on there. It gets too much to copy and paste and copy and paste all the time into what you're doing. So I'm just going into the English syllabus now. And I'm just going to randomly pick uh, an outcome. So here we go. I'm going to go to stage three. I've got EN 3-1A. So this is all about our reading, writing, listening, speaking, that kind of thing. And, you know, I've got lots of things to focus on under here. So I've got this, whoops, this outcome. I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste it here. Let's pretend I've done that in a nice table of some kind. 
it's kept the link of where it's from so I'm just going to take that out and we said this was EN3-1A now underneath it though we want the um, all these content markers that are here so I'm going to highlight everything that's on here in the content markers come on move up move up there we go here I'm going to right click copy I'm going to go into OneNote and just get off that I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste it now it's gone in there symbols and everything so what I'm going to do I'm just going to drag that margin out a bit so that it's actually using up the space properly and you can see here what it's got so um students blah 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 blah, blah all those things so what I want to do though is make checker boxes so I can actually tick off what I'm going to do so I'm going to highlight all of this I'm going to come up here to home and over here um, I'm pointing up here guys there that's the to do tag so what I want to do is tick on that and now it's automatically put my boxes over here for me it's put extra boxes on the side here because of those images so I'm actually going to flip back to my teaching program and show you what it looks like which is this so when you when you set it up the first time you do it nice you get rid of all of the images and things like that and now this is all in here this is my um, uh, guided reading program that I was doing with a class here's everything that I could be doing with them but I'm ticking the ones that I'm actually focusing on so next week I can just copy and paste this whole thing over and tick the actual things that I'm doing the next week if I want to okay moving on so another section I'm just going to show you now quickly is audio so if you go into insert there's a record audio section in here and this is actually really good if you want to test kids reading and write notes at the same time so as soon as I click on this it will start to record audio a text box is going to come up here and then I can type but what it will do is make notations of where I'm typing so that I can go back and revisit it so I'll just do this now so now the audio recording has started and what I'm going to do is make a note for myself to say that this is the part uh, where she stumbled as in wasn't you know didn't know what she was talking about and got stuck and then I'm just going to keep waiting for the child to read and read and read and here is a self-correction and then you know I might even note the word that which was you know flower and uh, you know I'm going to keep typing and then there was a you know there was a um, we had an interruption in the room so we had to you know you know pause pause for you know 20 seconds because I don't want to count that section and then when I'm done I can come up here and press stop and so I can see here if you see on the side here I wonder if I can zoom in on that yes I can so over here if I highlight there's a little play button there and I can go into those sections so if I want to play it back I don't think you'll hear it but I can press on it audio recording has started and what I'm going to do is make a note for myself to say that this is the part uh, where she stumbled as in wasn't you know didn't know what she was talking about so it played from you know where I was talking about so this part here about and got stuck and then I'm just going to keep waiting for the child to read and read and read and here is a self-correction and then you know so you get the idea that will um, you know take you back to those sections if you want to this is also good for professional learning I suppose if you've got someone talking and talking and talking and you know that you know you're someone who maybe drown, drowns out the extra sound or we get a bit distracted or we're doing other things or you just want to save it to listen back to later you know you can record whatever professional learning you're doing at the time and doing that all right another function that you've got is the search function up in the top corner here Ah, that was terrible oh my gosh up the top here here where it says search and you've got control E as your shortcut there so let's say now I want to look for um, I know there's got to be something English related so I'm just going to type the word reading and see what comes up oh my gosh this is all of my notebooks now so if you've only started you won't have all of these things so if I'm looking for reading all of these things have popped up let's do something a bit more ooh, 
my computer is having hissy fit. Let's do something more specific and go with handwriting. All these handwriting tabs are there and all of these are coming up. Keep in mind because I have access to my staff's um, one notes. They're all connected and all the collaboration. So that's all the things that are coming up in there as well. So, I mean, if I type in finance, um, you know, there's less there because this is from my executive notebooks. So that's a different thing. All right, let's look at one last quick one today, which is converting handwriting into text. So let's say for whatever reason, maybe you don't have a um, keyboard with you. You might be using some kind of just a writing device um, and, you know, you're writing your notes, but you might not be so happy with your style of writing. So, you know, um, I'm just going to put, whoops, here is my dodgy, woo, dodgy effort at taking notes full stop so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to click and highlight so I'm clicking and dragging this box to highlight the text and then up the top here so I'm in draw over here you'll see ink to text and it's now turned it into here's my dodgy effort <laughs> <laughs> taking notes I need to be a little bit neater and tidier but look it's even used the same color that's in there so uh, that's one way of doing that you've also got your ink to math problem over here so if you're doing um you know calculations in there if you're doing mathematics of some kind it could calculate that for you too so on my um, more specific maths a squared plus b squared equals c squared one of my favorite formulas I'm going to do the same ink to math oh look at that that's so cool okay insert <laughs> it's taken my a and put it as a four so you know maybe you want to write neater than what i do so <laughs> there's a few things for you so that's just a snippet of all the different things that I've discovered since playing around with OneNote and the different features it has. Um, I've done videos before about using OneNote and they were quite a while ago, some are one or two years ago, when I really had no idea and I was still doing things in Word or, or Sheets or like Excel and things like that and then inserting it into OneNote. So now I'm really trying to utilize the features of OneNote more so that it's all happening in it and I'm getting the best use out of the software as possible. So if you look back at my older videos, it's those things are still a good way to get started, I think, so that you can get your head around it. If you've been using it for a while like me, then hopefully some of these features were useful for you. Um, you know, there's so many other things like the immersive reader. Um, there's, there's heaps in there that I haven't even gone into. So, I mean, play with it, click on things use it, YouTube it, search it. And if you find something good, share it. If there's something that you think is a really cool feature in OneNote and I haven't covered it, please pop it in the comments below so that when our colleagues are going through it and checking out your comments, they might come across something new as well, or feel free to share it with me so I can learn it as well. That would be great. But I'm going to leave it there for now. I'm going to pop my uh, button down here. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, just hover over that, click to subscribe. I'm getting really close to 9,000 subscribers, which is just insane. I can't believe that. And thank you for the support. I'll put one of my other videos at the top there and I will see you in the next video next week. Thanks guys. Bye.